Hello, and welcome to the Synity CFO to CFO podcast series. My name is David Axon, and I'm going to be your host through this series of podcasts that explore the deepening relationship between CFOs and the use of data across the enterprise. Nearly every business interaction now creates a digital footprint, creating more and more data that we can begin to infuse into our management reporting analysis and decision making processes. And CFOs are becoming increasingly active in guiding the governance of that data and the use of that data to ensure that the organization achieves real value. In this series of podcasts, we'll be speaking to some CFOs and practitioners in the space about how their role is changing in the use of data across the enterprise and how they're combining data with talent within their finance organization to deliver ever more value. Please enjoy the series and don't hesitate to follow up with any questions if you would like further information. I'm delighted to be joined today by Melanie Payne, who is the Chief Financial Officer of Synity and has many years of experience working with companies like Accenture, EMC, and Dell. She brings a wealth of expertise to the role of the CFO, but also the expanding role of the CFO in translating data into valuable information across the enterprise. It's a pleasure to be joined by Melanie today. Pleasure to be here, David. Thank you. Thank you, Melanie. Uh, you know, in thinking back on 2020 has really been a truly extraordinary year in so many ways. What have been the main learnings from your point of view as a CFO and a small, fast growing company? Your comment on 2020 being exceptional is, is right on. It's, um, uh, you know, the main things that have sort of impacted us, I, I'll put them in two categories. One has been around speed and agility and the need to really move faster in how we make decisions, um, change course quickly, right? There's been so much uncertainty throughout the year. And I think about the speed at which we've had to make adjustments, tweak our strategy, tweak our execution along with that. Um, I, you know, I, I think that speed uh, is reflective of a pace of change that, that isn't going away. So I think that's gonna be with us for a little while. The other pleasant, surprise that hit me this year is uh, an increase in collaboration. You hear a lot of people talking about um, how hard it's been to not travel, but people getting used to working remotely. For a global finance organization that, um, you know, we're, we're typically not on the road a lot, maybe with the exception of the CFO, but the teams are not really big uh, travelers in terms of getting together and collaborating in person. As a matter of fact, um, you know, we had people on the team that had never seen each other's faces in the years they've been working together. And so this shift to find creative ways of connecting with people beyond in person uh, has actually improved the collaboration in a, in a team of people that's not been historically used to turning their cameras on or finding ways of connecting with each other more personally. And, um, and, and so I'm finding that this wave of people forcing themselves to find ways to look each other in the eye, work together, um, is, is impacting us in a very positive way. And I think that will stick with us too. And that's a fascinating point. Initially, it sounds a little counterintuitive, but when you think about it, we in finance are often sitting in our cubes, playing with our spreadsheets, and rarely do we put our heads above the parapet and see what's going on around us. That's right. So I think that collaboration is a really interesting point that I'm sure that other finance teams will experience. Are there any other things about the changes in the way you've worked that you think are going to have value You know, when whatever the new normal is? Uh, comes into play. I certainly think those those uh, two things initially will will absolutely have value. I think the other couple of things are going to have more long term value and are shifting the way we uh, think about our strategies. And and no surprise to the audience here, digital and talent, right? The um, you know in the digital space we we read a lot about the acceleration of digital transformations, companies' digital agendas becoming that much more important. Um, that's no different for the CFOs than it is for any other part of the organization. And the importance of high quality data, automation, you know, especially with the need to make fast decisions and the lack of, um, it, you know, whether it's hallway chatter or some people call it tribal knowledge, um, it, you know, there was a lot of information we used to get just by being present with other people and catching it on the drive-bys. Um, and with that going away, the importance of having good, fast, reliable data in our systems 
is that much more important. So I think this the, the importance of digital in the finance space is going to grow. I think the second is, um, you know, the market was already pretty competitive for finance talent. Um, and I see that getting more fierce as the boundaries of where people are located come down with uh, companies getting more virtual, folks have more options and companies have more access. And that's gonna create more competition for the, for, for the rock stars in the field. Mm -hmm. um, so how we proactively create and manage a career experience for the finance professionals on our teams is, is, uh, is gonna be the differentiator and that's gonna influence how we attract and retain our people. I think you're exactly right. And what I'm actually seeing is almost a convergence of digital and talent and the combination of those two and how effectively they work together. You know, I, I, I tend to not think about technology per se as separate. It's an enabler that allows talent to fulfill their potential. And I think it's actually quite liberating. Uh, you and I both grew up in the age of uh, spreadsheets and uh, playing with Lotus 1, 2, 3 prior to Excel, not to yeah. give too much away. Uh, but we now have such a wide range of technologies to play with. I think one of the interesting things I see from a CFO perspective is digital goes hand in hand with data, as you mentioned. And we Absolutely. now have more data than we could ever dream about. You know, in the old days, we just had what was in the general ledger and we saw the information once a month or once a quarter. Now we've got financial, operational, customer, and market data. How have you seen your role evolve with respect to broader use of data across the enterprises? You know, we in finance are beginning to include non-financial data in our forecasting to help us better understand future trends and behaviors, but also to really begin to understand how our decisions are impacting the customer and the marketplace. Yeah, absolutely, David. Um, you know, I talked earlier about speed, agility, acceleration of digital agendas as, as major waves and trends in, in any, any industry. But what, what we're seeing um, our, ourselves, and I expect others are seeing this too, is it's caused any kind of data issues and any company, any size has them. But any, any of those data issues get magnified. So seams between systems or seams between organizations or even seams between the financial and the operational data are, are, are magnified. And so the need to really get trusted data um, that makes sense across the organization to power that fast decision-making is really important. And what that's done is it's put the CFO squarely in the, uh, the critical role of driving business transformation, right? Where we might have done, uh, you know, it, it driven finance transformation agendas, we're right at the forefront of, of transforming the businesses, leading the charge on where data problems exist, where they're impacting speed and decision quality. While, you know, previously we might have been the, the, the keeper of an investment budget or in the role of approving the investments, now we're right on the front line saying we have to go do this because we can't support our strategy or drive the right kind of decision-making without better information. And it's, you know, so initiatives like mapping our own data across systems and establishing our own data governance processes and policies, those are all things we tell our customers are really critical. We as, uh, as CFOs are now living those challenges that, <clears throat> excuse me, other parts of the business uh, maybe have felt before we have. Yes, yeah, so we're no longer thinking about the accounts payable, or the accounts receivable process. We're thinking about an integrated set of supply processes and an integrated set of customer processes that cut across a lot of different functional boundaries within the organization. And I actually think that's really interesting, but to your very first point around collaboration, uh, finance hasn't always played nicely with other functions because we're often the people that say, no, you can't spend the money. Right. So I think it's, it's forcing us as finance professionals to put ourselves in the shoes of the people we're collaborating with and try and understand their environment so that we can help them with this transformation journey and most importantly of all, ensure the quality and the integrity of data, which is, after all, still finance's job number one. I think we start off sometimes with, why do you want to do that? Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, if you want to do that, here are some ways that we can think about fi fi financing that, where the cash and capital are going to come from to fund those types of investments. And okay. I think that's a much more constructive conversation 
all too often we were included at the back end of the process and weren't involved in any of the, the, the thinking about where prioritization of investments were going to be. And that really put us, a, put us in a corner uh, because we were trying to manage the allocation of resources without any real insight into what prioritization was going into that. And I think that made our job very hard. So it's another part of the liberation of finance, I think, which is one of my favorite themes at the moment. Let's talk a little bit about technology. You've had an, you know, virtually all your career has been spent in technology-oriented businesses. And uh, we started off with relatively simplistic tools and relatively closed systems. Now we have such a, a portfolio of increasingly sophisticated technologies. Which are the ones that you see having the biggest impact upon you and your team now and in the future? Yeah, I think this shift, um, you know, that you talked about it, expansive range of tools, um, you know, self-service automation, BI tools, um, you know, real-time connected, integrated AI, machine learning, those are starting to, um, to, to expand to have uh, very real value in the finance space. And what we see happening is we're shifting from a history of IT-led big projects, um, you know, six wait six months and give me a million dollars and we can give you this new report kind of a model to, um, to, to user-led automation. And so, uh, you know, scripting, macros, uh, connectedness, low-code generation kinds of tools that allow you to automate user activity without getting a corporate IT function involved and going through the whole lengthy linear process of design, build, test, cutover kind of a thing. Um, it also changes the profile of the skill sets we need to have. So we talked about talent. We talked about um, how the roles are evolving. You know, certainly your finance professionals have to have that foundational understanding of the business and the numbers and strong anal analytical and process skills. They'll always be core, but we're also finding a need for strong technology skills, like, you know, like building connections into our data lakes, like understanding data mapping and building process automation to simplify routine things to give us that speed. Those skills are increasingly table stakes for finance teams. I think one of the interesting areas for me is the, the opportunity we now have based upon getting the data right, which is obviously job one here, is the ability to use different techniques and visualization representations of data so that we can help explain to people that perhaps aren't comfortable with numbers or aren't comfortable with a spreadsheet format for everything that we deliver. And the ability for people to then be able to interrogate that information on their own using these self-service tools allows us as finance to sit side by side and help them think about what the right decision might be. Yeah. You know, one of the things I like to say now is that finance's job starts when we deliver the report or the analysis, because that report or analysis is only as good as the decisions that result from it. And all too often in finance, we're exhausted and it's very late at night or very early in the morning by the time we can hit send on the email with the report. Now these technologies are enabling us to do that in a much more consistent and rapid fashion so we can actually spend more time working with our business partners to help them better interpret that information and to then make more effective decisions on the basis of that. And uh, again, it's a different skill set. Uh, those collaboration skills become even more important in that environment. And, uh, you know, the ability to get out of our cube and start having a communication and a conversation with people, uh, I think is going to be a big skill moving forward. For It always has been for the best finance professionals, but it's now going to be routine for all finance professionals. And I yeah. think that's going to change a little bit the profile of uh, how we hire and how we develop our people going forward. I agree with that. Uh, and, and, and I also see a need for the emotional intelligence or empathy to be able to sit in the, in the seat of the business leader that you're, that you're partnered with when you're going through those results, when you're guiding and informing the decision making to really understand where they're coming from. Whereas uh, in the past, that may have been less, uh, less critical. I think it's really important to, to, to take the emotional and the human side of the number and the data into that as well. 
or sometimes we have to sell the numbers to get people to interpret them appropriately. And uh, that's not always the easiest thing to do because everyone has their own point of view, but uh, our ability to be able to shape that conversation, I think is an important part of our toolkit going forward. Okay. In terms of your role as CFO of Synity, what are your priorities for enhancing the value that you and your team can deliver to the business as you continue to grow moving forward? Yeah, we touched on all of the things that are, uh, are really critical for us and they're shaping the initiatives we're taking on in 2021 and going forward, right? Enhancing our digital skills, um, business partnering uh, with the, uh, you know, with our audience, understanding the business end to end, connecting the dots between organizations, between the financial results and, and forecasts and the operating levers that people can pull um, I, it, you know, I, I, I very much see that as our role in making sure that people, everyone in the organization connects the dots between the, the, the decisions they make every day and the performance of the business. And so arming our team to be able to effectively have those conversations and, and uh, drive that more outward with their uh, counterparts outside of finance is, is a key priority. I think the other is, um, is the technology and the speed, right? The expectation for fast information and better informed decisions, insight, you know, wh whatever words you want to use, the expectations are higher and, uh, and, and, and we should expect more from ourselves as well as, you know, finance team members. So our agenda for the next one to three years is really around elevating our speed making sure we're doing that with good quality data that connects across the organization, enhancing our digital skills and, and business partnership. And the speed is a really interesting one to me because all too often in the past, I think we've been constrained by the accounting calendar. You know, when we've closed the books, when we've published the reports, and we've sort of made the business fit the accounting calendar rather than making the accounting and finance information fit to the needs and the cycle within the business. And I think one of the things that digitization and the availability of broader data sets with increased frequency is doing is allowing us to better match what we do in finance with the rhythm of the business, rather than forcing the business to try and fit in within our cycle. You know, you used to be that no one could call anyone in finance for the first week of the month because we were closing the books or, you know, the whole month of October was out because we were trying to get the budgets organized. And frankly, I, I feel that's not really an acceptable answer to be able to give back to the business these days. We need to synchronize what we're doing in finance and accounting with the rhythm of decision making within the business. And that's really about its speed, but it's also how we organize our work and how we prioritize where we spend our time. And I think looking at technology as an enabler to do that rather than simply an automation of a transaction process or uh, of a report, it's how it allows us to begin to interact with our business partners uh, that becomes a very freeing and I think career advancing and nurturing process for our people. Um, and one of the things I've enjoyed, I always say, you know, I like to say that you know, the finance is one of the coolest jobs in business. I actually think it's the coolest job. So I probably need my head examining for thinking that way. But it's because we have one of the few functions where we do get to see all aspects. Because ultimately, nearly everything that happens within our businesses, you know, results in a change in a line item on a P&L account or a balance sheet or a cash flow statement. And therefore, we really do get a very interesting view of the cause and effect relationships within the business. And that makes, that makes it fun for me. Again, I probably need my head examining. But what, what aspects of finance do you find the most satisfying? You've been in the finance roles for over 30 years now. And uh, it really strikes me that I can just tell by the way you talk, you're passionate about this. So what is it that makes it fun for you? You know, um, a, a, a lot of it, frankly, is, is personal. It's about how I'm wired. Um, and, and I agree with you. Maybe I need my head examined, too. I think it is the coolest job in the company. Um, I, you know, I thrive on change. And I love to build some build things that are great and, great and lasting. And I love to grow and develop other people. And, and where better to be able to connect the dots uh, in something to, to identify opportunities to grow and build 
Um, it, you know, nothing's changing faster than the tech industry right now. So I can't imagine a better place to be. And, um, and uh, so much opportunity for the up and coming finance professional to take their careers in, in so many different directions, in and outside of finance, right? The boundaries that define finance are, are changing and evolving. Well, I think, yeah, and a lot of the time we're collaborating more with people outside of finance than sometimes with our colleagues inside of finance. Right. Because we're trying to connect those dots. We're trying to understand why did that number move or why, perhaps more interesting, why might it move in the future or how can we make it move in the future as we move from sort of a backward-looking, descriptive view of the world to a much more prescriptive view that we want to bring to the business going forward. Are there any other things that you think about at the moment as you look to the future that get you really excited? Um, I, you know, I, 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 I love technology. I've always loved technology. And, and so the nerd in me loves to see the, the, the change in what's coming, the, you know, innovative and creative startups. Anybody that's in a role like mine must get, I don't know, I must get 50 spam emails a week on this new tech company that's got this great new capability that's all the buzzwords and uh, on the planet AI and machine learning and blah blah blah. I think my team's getting tired of me forwarding those things over, saying, "Hey, have we taken a look at this? Could this help us?" <laughs> so, um, it, you know, what I get really excited about is the, the opportunity to, to 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 take new things, to try um, to, to to do something creative. Um, you know, we'll win some, we'll lose some. We might not uh, be successful on every one of them. But I'm, you know, I'm in this try lots of things, um, f fail fast every once in a while, you'll win one. And if we can change the game and make things easier, more automated, free up time for our teams, I think that can give them the power to be a lot more impactful to the organizations um, that, that they serve. I, I think you hit the nail on the head in terms of changing our perspective. Because when we look backwards, you know, detail equals accuracy. The more detail we have, the more accurate it becomes. But as soon as we try and pivot to the future, uncertainty and ambiguity are the name of the game. And sometimes when I was training as an accountant, that was a little difficult because things add up, they balance, they're right. Because the very word accounting means looking backwards at things. And as soon as you pivot to the future, you've got to be tolerant of failure, whether it's trying a new way of uh, evaluating an investment or seeing how a new technology can de be deployed within your workplace. And the, 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 the comfort to fail occasionally, but to learn from those failures, I think this is a great leadership characteristic that I'm beginning to see emerge in a lot of CFOs that are out there. Uh, so uh, all in all, I think it's a fascinating time. And I think you exhibit many of the attributes of what we want to see in forward-looking CFOs who are really a partnership with the CEO and the rest of the C-suite team. You understand data, you understand talent, you're curious about technology and its application and evolution. Uh, so I think this has been a really interesting discussion. And Melanie, I would just like to thank you for your time. Uh, it's been a pleasure and good luck to you and Sinity in the future. It's been my pleasure, David. Thanks so much.